I'm sure a lot of people pour boiling water on themselves. I like boiling water. About it. Yeah, but that's just me. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another Hello. fun Fairville University quickie. As always, I am Amber. And I'm Brad. Yay. So today we are going to be responding actually to a customer question that we had gotten. Um, anonymously, basically about cuddling and affection. So let's roll into it. I am someone who does not super enjoy public displays of affection and is not super cuddly. I feel like this can be a detriment to myself and my partner because my partner really enjoys physical affection and displays of affection out in public. What can I do to become a more cuddly person for me and my partner? How can I open up or how can we navigate this together? Yay! So first and foremost, like, thank you for sending that to us. I know that's really hard. It's super hard to ask those questions. It's hard in general just to admit that, like, hey, I need help. I know it's one, something I struggle with all the time. I'm not good at asking for help. No, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> thank you for that. I think it's okay to not want to all the time. For Especially sure. if you, there's a lot of reasons that someone could not be particularly touchy-feely. Yeah. Uh, maybe something happened to you in the past. Maybe... Like trauma. Uh, yeah, trauma. Or just not being, I mean, it doesn't even need to be that serious. You could just not be somebody who enjoys a lot of physical touch or cuddling or public mm -hmm. displays. I know public displays of affection, PDA can be really hard for a lot of people. I think that PDA was a little hard for me because I grew up very religious. That's just me personally. And it wasn't something that you did. Like, I you got in trouble, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like... Technically, dating wasn't even a thing. We were courting. When we got together, that was really hard for me to learn mm -hmm. how to actually show affection. And I think in the beginning, I was overly affectionate. I was the kind of person I would like hug to hug to say hello, hug to say goodbye, that sort of thing. That's not a bad thing, though. No, but there's a time and a place for it, and I recognize that now older. Um, so you'd say it's like kind of a matter of consent, really? Consent is important. There, like I said, there's a time and a place. I think that communication is the first thing you should do. Like, can I hug you? Yeah. Or I need a hug. Consent. I mean, no matter how long you've been together, we've been together for 10 years, and I'll still ask, like, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed or tired, it's been a long day, like, hey, can I give you a hug? Can I touch you? Can I, you know, pat your head or rub your hair? And if it's a no, it's a no. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not. It doesn't mean it doesn't, anything. Yeah, it doesn't mean that they don't care. For you or your needs it just means that sometimes the second party is overwhelmed or doesn't feel like they're in a yeah. mental ability to provide the affection you're requesting so i think covering the first part so step one communicate your needs or have them communicate their needs um i'd say step two what we kind of just talked about is don't take it personally understand that mm -hmm. their boundary may be there for different reasons and it doesn't always have to do with you so don't get upset about it. It's just, it is what it is. They need that space for whatever reason. And it may not always be the space that they need forever. It could just be, I'm feeling like, especially if I've just done something like gone to the grocery store, I'm going to feel super overwhelmed because I just did a bunch of different things. I'm not ready to cuddle. You don't just have to hug or lay in bed and cuddle. There's a lot of different ways you can show that sort of physical yeah. affection. You could be sitting on the couch holding hands or... You can be walking somewhere and just being like, you know, oh, yeah. touching. I feel like that's us a lot. Like even just sitting next to each other and having your knees bumping under the table. It's mm. kind of like touching, but you're not physically touching. So finding other ways to show that kind of affection. And there's lots of different reasons that you would need to do that as well. I know from one for us is we work together. Like mm. I work at our corporate office here at Fervilla and Brad works as a supervisor at the Megastore. So during business hours, we have to maintain a certain level of professionalism, but our company understandably doesn't expect us to be robotic. Uh, robotic. You know, we're still human. So there's different ways to kind of show that, you know, a gentle like pat on the shoulder or different things mm -hmm. that I'll still show physical affection without crossing a boundary, crossing a line, you yeah. know, professional, but still, still fun and lovely. Third point, I would say just try to navigate different types of cuddling that work for you. Yeah. I'd say another big thing that you can do is just figure out in your schedule what, when it works for you, not just mm -hmm. like cuddling like in the in the 
uh, sense of the word, but also like maybe spending 10 minutes together holding cans, mm -hmm. doing that at the dinner table or something. The opposite rings true as well. I actually watched a TikTok recently where someone was talking about how they struggled with uh, physical contact and things because of COVID, because of social distancing. That's a good point. And they, they point. lived with their partner who sometimes also needed that space. And what they called it was astronaut time. And what it is is you're you're two astronauts and you're working together to keep the st the space station afloat, but you're doing your tasks. So the other one, because it's space, you can't hear each other. You're not communicating. You're just in the space together, but you don't necessarily interface. And I think yes. that's a good counter. Is like, yeah, we can have cuddle time, but I might need astronaut time later. That's a good point. So you're kind of scheduling your time around what the other person needs. Yeah. You like really maybe need to let's, do that. let's watch a movie, but after we watch the movie, let me play a video game or let me read a book in the corner with just a light over my head and we don't talk for a minute because I just need that alone time too. Yeah. You're valid as much as they are for wanting or not wanting physical contact at all times. You need to recharge your battery. That's really what it is. You mm -hmm. need to just relax, redo, like just do what you need to do. Yeah. That's really what it is. Coming back from work, going out to run an errand, things like that can definitely drain you physically and emotionally to be able to handle being supportive of someone else's needs in that situation and communicating that going back to that first point is important but knowing that you are also valid and not wanting it at all times is fine yeah i think that's totally true i'm also a big use whatever you can yeah. to make cuddling more you're, comfortable you're a prop cuddler i'm a prop cuddler what does that mean don't talk about my dr mccorez we're not you doing have, this. You have body pillows, you have weighted blankets, you have plushies. Uh, yeah. I have one blanket. You have you have a sheet. That is not a, a blanket. I have, I have a piece of 8 by 11 paper that I sleep with when I'm yeah. in comfort. Yeah. So I just saw on Amazon that they sell human dog beds, and they're like large, rounded beds that have the sides on them. And that was something that I thought of, like, that would be great for cuddling yeah. because it's you know, you have this space for it. It's something mm -hmm. that kind of encompasses you. It kind of get, you know, it's soft, it's cuddly, mm -hmm. it's warm. You're in this space. So not just kind of like scheduling time, but also like this is where we cuddle. Maybe yeah. finding a place that works best, somewhere that's quiet, the or especially corner. if you've got like the cuddle corner. I mm -hmm. love that. Now, I want a cuddle corner. Non-millionaires also use couches. <laughs> I also know of couples who like, their intimate time is in the shower, but it's not like sexy time. Like they'll just shower together. Mm -hmm. They just wash each other's hair, wash each other's back, or like, you know, just be in hot water together. Just think outside the box. It doesn't also have to be warm and fuzzy just because I like warm and fuzzy. It's okay if you don't want to cuddle. Just try to figure out times that do yeah. work for you. Make a schedule. Make a schedule if you can. Whatever works. Not just yeah. around cuddling like we talked about. Try to find your astronaut time. That's also good. Mm -hmm. Figure out different types of cuddling or affection or PDA that work for you. Like communicate that out. Communication is the main foundation. That's your that's your overall bubble. And just kind of put those stuff in there to kind of work through together. I hope that answered your question, the user who sent that to us. I really appreciate you reaching out again. I hope we answered it. Of course, if you guys have any other questions or want to put them down below, you can put them in the comment section. You can also reach out to us directly through um, YouTube. Send us comments and messages and say, hey, I have a question for your next video or just want an answer yeah. we're here for you and when you're in stores our associates are able to help you with any questions you have in person as well yeah 100 percent. so thank you guys again for joining us don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one bye, bye.